Caddis Maximus here. This time with a teardown of the second generation Milwaukee 2504 M12 half inch hammer drill, brushless. I like to do these after the review, that way it's still fresh in my mind and everybody else's mind who may have watched the review. And I've just been having a little bit of fun with this effects program, that's why I've been adding some of that stuff to the videos. Anyway, did do a review. This is definitely a stout drill if you can deal with the ergonomics. But of course could use better airflow so it doesn't uh, get quite so hot. So on a Milwaukee they do have a very, well we can't see. It should be easier to replace the truck. They use a heavy duty uh, number three Phillips that is also slotted two ways. So it should be able to be removed pretty easily. I'm not going to pull off the truck just because it's hard on the gearboxes. But I was going to point out many drill uh, manufacturers are just either lock touting or simply torquing the chuck uh, so tightly from the factory that they're foregoing the center screw. Also means that they have to be hit really hard if you have to unscrew the to remove the chuck. And it's kind of nice to see that on the Milwaukee that should be pretty decent. But normally I don't remove these during this teardown just to pull out the spindle. But we'll certainly take apart the case and talk about uh, a couple, one special point because it does use a vertical style battery there is going to be this metal clip here this metal clip has a little tab that prevents us from sliding off and you will want to get in there with a pick and lift up that tab while simultaneously working with a screwdriver just to start getting it lifted up until the tab uh, goes past the case and it's really not so bad you can just get under the edge of the clip with a hook pick it really is the best in this situation and you just get with a smaller screwdriver and just slip it up and then the little clip will come right off if you over bend this little tab and it's sticking too flat this will go ahead and bend it back down so it'll snap in tightly all the other screws are Torx 10s on this we have six screws in the clamshell which are all the same length and we have four screws on the gear case. When you reassemble these drills that have the cross bolted or cross screwed uh, uh, gearbox, excuse me, you'll want to put the clamshell together and at least get a couple of these screws tight before you tighten down these screws. That way it makes sure that the clamshell is tightly together before you lock it up because sometimes You'll tighten these screws first and it'll hold the clamshell just apart a little bit when you're trying to tighten down the rest of it. So at least on this Milwaukee, the initial removal, many times the clamshell has a lip that seats into the front of the gear case and you have to pull the gear case out a little bit. But on the Milwaukee, you can just pop it right off. There's that powerful brushless motor. Third so mention, this is uh, of course a PA6, so uh, GF30 fiberglass, 30% nylon and then whatever this is a TPS overmold uh, it isn't super clean you can see it's just a little bit not so happy there and I don't know if I mentioned but in this kit that this Milwaukee came with everything was made in China except for the battery cells which were Malaysian or Korean and then the packout case was Israeli one thing we can see here is they're using a 24 volt uh, just trigger switch so they're probably using the same capacity switch on all their tools. Here's the brushless controller, and we can see that since they laid all the chips flat, that they've screwed in a big aluminum heat sink to the bottom of it to handle all that power. It is covered in lacquer. We do have glue there to prevent the wires from fatiguing. They did hot snot the wires down there, so that is good to see. But the issue is, is the way the ventilation, it comes in through the front of the trigger, through these two holes on two holes on each side, comes through here and is designed to come across the controller to cool those transistors. And then there's this molding right here with these curvatures. So when it's put together, that seats in right here to provide a uh, surround for the fan and the block air around the motor so that the air is forced to come in through the back of the motor and then out through the fan. It just happens to be a really convoluted path and obviously in construction, uh, particularly sawdust, uh, we'll just start packing in all throughout that. It shouldn't be too bad, but over time it will start to become uh, an issue just because uh, there's just such a complicated airway instead of some air like coming up through the trigger and then some air just coming right from the back through the front. Since it has an electronic clutch, this is like a volume knob on your stereo, and so it's going to have a series of wires. Surprisingly enough, there even appears to be a ground wire as well as three of them. So this always makes getting these gearboxes apart a little bit more interesting because now you've got a whole bunch of wires everywhere. 
and cordless drills are a little bit harder to take apart, especially these, because everything. Now there's a reverse switch. It just has a little slot that goes on this wire, which just acts as a rocker. But everything is so tight that it all kind of has to come out as one unit here in order to actually get this darn thing disassembled. Is all we're trying to do. We There is a little plug for the gearbox, and we're trying to get at that. And unfortunately, it means just this whole mess uh, needs to come out of here. So it's always fun getting these wires tucked uh, back into place after you disassemble one of these things. And there's the drill. You could technically uh, slap a battery on the. Actually, we could. That might. Oh, no, we can't. There's nothing supporting uh, the fuel coils on the motor will rub. But all the case is, is just something to hold uh, the internals. They do use a rubber seal or a sealed ball bearing back there, so I do appreciate that, although there is some flux. Uh, they didn't clean up that uh, sensor board very well. We are seeing something right there, the copyright date on that board. If we could get the camera to focus, I don't know why it won't focus. Uh, May 19th, 2017, so it's surprising how old, relatively old, the board is for how new the tool is. And then, of course, you know, now we have a gearbox. There's a circuit board that's in it that this collar is activating four wires plus a fifth ground wire. So, and surprisingly enough, you have to unscrew one wire and then undo a plug. Uh, so, definitely, serviceability has gone uh, way down on uh, at least these types of tools. Wow, that screw is not very tight. That screw was actually just barely in there. That was really surprising. I should mention that the four screws holding on the gearbox are longer than the ones in the handle. Also, when working with this, you want to try not to flex this. This is where all the sensor wires and the three main power wires, since they're soldered, the solder and the wires are so darn short that there's the solder is wicked into most of this wire, so they're actually pretty stiff. And if you bend them or force them straight, you're going to be fatiguing them, and that's going to increase the resistance. Now we have that apart, we'll just hold the fan, and actually, I believe this is a style, yes, it rotates, so that makes it nice and easy. We don't have to kind of yank the motor on some drills. The bearing on the front of the ar uh, arm, in this case, you know, the center portion, the armature, uh, will just be pressed in, but on this Milwaukee, we can see it was a rotating locking collar. And if there's one thing that Milwaukee can't be criticized in, it's the amount of grease that they've insisted on putting on their tools just for years. The engineers always say, just load them up. I did a big rebuild of a three-quarter inch drill. It was just packed with the grease. And we can see this gearbox grease is just coming out of all the orifices. So definitely no lack there. And just for fun, they did use uh, number one Phillips for the two screws for the shifting lever. Take note. It is offset, so the finger is going to go towards the gearbox, and the upper bow of the lever is going to go towards the motor. It's always real special to uh, install one of these backwards and get the whole drill right back together, and you can't figure out why the uh, uh, reverse switch won't seat in properly until you realize that your error was installing a little shift lever backwards. Uh, never a pleasant situation. Since this is a spring, and on some of these it can be kind of a funky thing because they do design it so that the lower fingers are bending inwards to the gearbox. Is actually, once again, the hook pick is you can hook under it and then use your thumb against the gearbox and really get a lot of control when removing that uh, little spring there. It takes a minute to get into these, especially if you haven't used it before. So what we'll have is a thrust washer and then we'll have the first stage ring gear. And when I take this stuff apart, it's real easy just to line it up. It's not too many parts. You just line it up. We have three gears on the first stage. So I did do this with the DeWalt. And the DeWalt, of course, was uh, a 12-gear gearbox, four gears on each stage. Um, but we'll see what Milwaukee does here. Three gears is just fine because uh, that's where the least amount of load is. And the needle nose plier, whoop, five gears on the second stage. Let me get this stuff organized very coarse gears and so how the gear shift actually let me get that mechanism out pliers are pretty handy in this situation I may not be able to get that to cooperate come on now you kinda use the pliers as a set of spreaders and that's how you can get there we go we did get it out so when you shift into second gear 
what this will do is this will slide. Wow, this is greasy. It will lock up on those exterior teeth and it's measured so when as soon as it gets to that portion, what it does is it halfway, it locks this, the whole assembly together with these gears and disconnects these splines and basically bypasses one stage and that's how you get your gear shift. So it's simultaneously disengaging the second stage and then it would freewheel but as it's disengaging it's also locking it up. So all the force goes to the first and last stages. And then here's our second stage carriage and we have five gears down there in the final stage. Let me get this apart. And as we can see, the metal, the cast metal is just to support the bearings for the spindle. And then the plat the nylon housing, the reason it's why is they don't even need to spend any money dyeing it or anything. Uh, it's just really to hold all the steel parts. But seeing the other five gears in there, uh, we can see that the Milwaukee is a 13 gear. And that's actually pretty righteous. Wow, this thing is also righteously stuck. There we go. Usually these things, you want to make sure uh, that you have them oriented. And this does because it has the two uh, provisions for the shift collar. So you really want to make sure that uh, you have it correct. And so, of course, the shift collar would face the top of the gearbox. And it was actually pretty tight in there. The nylon is preventing the ring gears from spinning. So that's really what it's doing. That's why there are all those slots in there. Because here's the final drive ring gear. And then here is our five little gears so kind of interesting in here and I'll talk about the sprag clutch in just a second they use a trilobe drive pinion or design which is pretty good how they even get the chucks on and off from the factories they have a special socket so if you ever uh, have a really stubborn chuck off it often you have to you know take it apart down to this point and then figure out some way of actually getting a hold of that we can see a rubber sealed ball bearing back there and I assume there's gonna be a second one uh, just a little further up to give it support. Interestingly, there is some kind of uh, snap ring right in here that prevents it from completely falling out. I have it in the, there we go, the hammer drill mode. And so when you're hammering, you're pressing against, and then there's this little dog teeth that are in there. And so that's why there's always just a little bit of spindle plays because it has to be able to slide back and forth inside the bearing instead of just being pressed on. And it's just the fact of life with a hammer drill. And I do actually like this. This, even though this is aluminum, this collar right here, I don't know if if I can actually get that out or not. Let me spend a second. It's in there pretty tight, so I'm not going to be able to get that out. But this is an entire steel piece that's holding the bearing that the sprag clutch. So the sprag clutch is, of course, when you're tightening the chuck instead of power driving it, that's what prevents it from just running backwards. Is one of these little one-way clutches, and so it has this little drive dog. Uh, that just sits right inside here. Let's see if I can lose all the parts. So anyway, when you're turning the chuck and this little dog turns, it starts to push these bearings out against the outer wall here. And the harder you turn, the tighter they get. They do uh, end up slipping sometimes, especially as they get warm. But that's the property is that this cam turns and is forcing them outwards uh, tighter and tighter. However, when you're actually running the drill, what happens is this whole carriage is turning. And so what it's doing is it's just hitting against these rollers. And then they're transferring their, they're actually trying to drive inwards, transferring their energy to this. So these do actually act as a little bit of a roller bearing to help support and deliver the energy more efficiently. Uh, it's really just a pretty reliable and genius design. They just have to be kept pretty darn clean. So not too bad. It does have a 13 gear instead of a 12 gear gearbox like the DeWalt, but you would expect that for a heavier duty Milwaukee. And just on a final note here, uh, there's the first stage, the second stage, and the third stage. So we can see how much heavier the thicker the teeth are getting as they go through each stage and are taking uh, more and more load. And if we stack these, I was trying not to get greasy. This grease has the color and consistency of mucus. It's real special. But we can see that the first stage gear is pretty thin. And then the two additional stages are a bit thicker as well as having uh, higher cross-section teeth. So they're uh, doing everything just right, you know, what you would expect. Some manufacturers just use the same gears for all the stages, and it kind of doesn't make sense. 
And I think I'll end it at that. The last note that I'll mention is, of course, making sure, like, when you put in these collars, this collar here where it has a recess, that, you know, you do get them facing the correct direction. That's why I like to stack them the way they come out. But an additional uh, note is that this wire here, when you're reinstalling it and finally getting it in there, it's going to end up being oriented like this. You really need to make sure that it gets right into that groove. And uh, that can always be a hassle if you uh, don't do that. It won't shift right. Anyway, sorry for the uh, long teardown video, but there is a bit to talk about on the inside of this drill. And to tell you the truth, besides this control board, which just seems, this is my complaint, is just that how anemic, I mean, it's a nice control board, but they just had to kind of cram the amount of power that this thing puts out uh, through this little circuit board. I mean, they did lacquer it and everything, but it's, you know, you wonder, uh, the worst case scenario, such as, you know, you're using this thing uh, outside in Yuma, Arizona in August, and the darn tool is 120, 130 degrees, and you're running it hard. Uh, you really wonder how well it's going to hold up. But surprisingly enough, it's actually really easy to blow out, because to blow it out, all you have to do is remove the six screws from the clamshell and just two of the, the screws from the gearbox, and you can pull the clamshell open and really blow it out easily. Uh, so I would take advantage of that, and it's at least nice that you can do it that way. And I do like seeing all the metal in here, and I really did like seeing this steel reinforcing inside the aluminum. Uh, it, it is nice. It is heavy duty. And really, it's what I would expect out of a Milwaukee gearbox. I mean, Milwaukee during the 90s and even early 2000s, uh, their cordless tools just were not so great. And it's really nice to actually see how much they've stepped it up. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.